Good morning, traders. My name is Christopher Vecchio, currency strategist with Daily FX. Today is Monday, October 10th, 2016. These are your FX headlines as we turn the page to North America. And after a quiet session this morning on the data side, some German trade balance figures, some Swiss employment, um, we're really looking at another quiet session for the U.S. today. When we scroll down the calendar here, nothing of interest on the calendar because it's a U.S. holiday. In fact, it's both a U.S. and Canadian holiday. So expect that markets will be slower today. Um, as it were, when we consider what's going on around the world, focus, of course, is on what's going on in Europe and the British pound. Right now, the British pound remains under pressure as we've seen these Brexit-related fears continue to sustain themselves over the past few weeks. Today, slight rally higher despite opening the week lower relative to the close down by less than 0.1% from Friday, but overall uh, up from where we gapped lower to 123.97, uh, now trading 124.26. Now, there's a big reversal on Friday, of course, People are saying that it could have been a fat finger trade. I disagree. You look at some of the forensic evidence of bid and offers, thanks to folks like Nanex and Eric Hunsitter, uh, we could see that it wasn't necessarily a gap in liquidity that drove the initial move lower. So by those means, it looks basically like this could have just been an algorithm gone wrong. Um, from that point of view, you consider what happened. You have the FT article saying Hollande wants to take a stance towards a hard Brexit, and then the pound starts selling off. You probably had an algo see that kind of hard Brexit had a lot attached to a significant European leader's name, and a big order was triggered to sell. In any case, I don't think we're out of the woods here for 2A volatility. I know the technicals have broken lower. I know that we've been looking for the break lower for the past several weeks, and seeing a move to fresh lows and move down towards that 120 figure was somewhat vindicating, but the fact is, we have a long time before Article 50 is even triggered. If it's due to come out in March 2017, I wouldn't be surprised if we see price down back near 120, then back up near 130. It's going to be a lot more volatile than other pairs, so to speak. Along these lines, Euro Pound still remains in decent condition, having broken out of its sideways channel running higher. It's been following its daily 8 EMA here on a closing basis, so we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Indicators are here in bullish territory. As it were, Pound is pretty much in the gutter on the momentum side of things. Indicators have broken lower across the board, and we've seen that price has sustained itself below a number of uh, the key moving averages. Prefer to sell Pound rallies, prefer Pound uh, weakness to strength, and in any case, uh, moving forward, I think that it's best to use a little bit less leverage here than you would in any other pair, just given the volatility overhang. Um, when we talk about the U.S. dollar, of course, there is to consider what happened on Friday with non-farm payrolls. Uh, right now, we've seen that the U.S. dollar index is hovering around that key 12,100 level, a level that we've flirted with before in the past as a resistance support region. Right now, that NFP growth, again, Kind of like Goldilocks, not too hot, not too cold. Is it good enough to keep the Fed on track to hiking rates? Sure. Well, they want to hike rates in November right around the election? Probably not. I still think December remains the most likely period. And as it were, Friday's data doesn't do anything one way or another to dissuade me or uh, uh, suggest that I'm being too cautious on that point of view. As such, when we look at other indicators like DXY, you could see here how we're not getting the same level of excitement around the British pound sell-off. And again, that's due to the fact of the difference in weightings. U.S. dollar index, as we were just looking at, 25% yen, euro, pound, and Aussie equal weighted. DXY here that we're currently looking at, 57.6% of this is based around the euro, only 11.9% is based around the pound. So when you consider DXY, no surprise here that the breakout isn't gathering steam because well, the euro dollar is still trapped within its range. It's been in here for about two months now, for better or for worse, until we get a break, a close down through that 111.30 area, or we get a definitive close to one of the swing highs here, in this case 112.80. It's going to be hard to convince me that euro dollar is that interesting to look at and that DXY is going to have that significant of a rally going forward. If we see euro dollar close down below there, that would greatly increase the odds of broad dollar strength, considering we're seeing things like oil running higher, dollar CAD, for example, is not dollar strength breaks out, 
oil probably has a more difficult time running up to the top side. Dollar CAD gets more fuel here. But the fact that Dollar CAD is holding up right now amidst all this, it bodes very well for the U.S. dollar. And typically, Dollar CAD tends to leave in the fact that oil is pressing some recent highs and Dollar CAD is still holding up there. Probably means that one of these two things will have to break. Either Dollar CAD is going to break lower or oil will stop rallying. In other case, right now, the dollar in the near term seems to be on good footing. Uh, for event risk this week, you know, this is a quieter week. We just got through NFPs. We just got through the ISM readings. Tomorrow, you can see again, we have a quiet calendar. Even for Europe, Zoo survey. Wednesday, quiet calendar. Fed minutes in the afternoon. But nothing substantive that could drive or shift sentiment on the dollar side of things. You think about it for the euro, it's very similar as well. It's not really in its own driver's seat right now, where the Fed speculation and U.S. elections are more important, where everything going on with Brexit and the speculation around a hard Brexit is more important. And the questions about the efficacy of the BOJ's easing program, those seem to be more important. So really the euro is uh, in the back seat right now. It doesn't seem to have much going on that's too decisive. We've heard some things from policymakers the last few days saying, you know, we're not going to taper anytime soon. We're you know, going to look to perhaps enhance our program, shift it around, change uh, uh, some features about it to make sure it's working effectively. The euro's coming off a little bit more. But again, about a 1 in 4 chance, less than that of a 10 basis point rate cut by the ECB through the end of this year. I do think those odds are underpriced considering the contingency for the ECB to act as action by other fiscal policymakers, and we know that's not going to happen right now with Italian constitutional referendum in December and five core elections next year. As such, I think that the ECB ultimately does have to ease or change the aspects of its QE program, but for now, euro dollar is still stuck in this range. Dollar index is going to have a hard time uh, rallying until it does break down further. And again, DXY, 50, rounding up 58% euro, 14% yen, 12% pound, 9% CAD. You can see that the euro really needs to move if dollar index is going to get a lift at all. All right, that's it for me today. I'll be back later on with another video. As always, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to reach out to me through the Daily FX Real Time News Feed, Stock Twits, and Twitter at CVECIO FX. You can always email me, CVECIO at dailyfx.com. If I don't speak to you before then, good luck trading the rest of this week.